Hey everyone, welcome to a live stream here on the Transport Evolved channel. We're gonna try something a little bit different today. We are trying something we've never tried before. As you would have seen from the title of the video, today's video is entitled, The Chevrolet Bolt EV is back, uh, or something like that. And so the Chevrolet Bolt, my personal Chevrolet Bolt EV that I'm uh, leasing at the moment is back from the shop and I thought I'd give you a little bit of a walk around and explain some of the things that have been done to it. Nothing really big, nothing major. And so we're gonna do a little bit of a walk around now. To make that possible, I am going to switch to this camera here, which you see, this is our secondary camera. And so I'm gonna walk outside and show you, please ignore the state of mess that is the Transport Evolved studio right now. We're gonna go outside, I'll talk you around some of the issues of the Bolt. I can't see the chat while I'm outside, but let's go check out the Bolt EV and I'll show you what went wrong with it. So as you can see, she's back. Artemis, that's the name of my Chevrolet Bolt EV, is back from the shop. We had a minor accident a couple of weeks ago. I will take responsibility for it, although I'm not entirely sure it was my, my fault. It resulted in my car, which never goes in a car wash. Um, I was putting it through a car wash for National Drive Electric Week, and we ended up going through a car wash and there being a bit of a mishap, and it meant that I ended up hitting another car in the car wash. And so we cracked this bumper here. So this bumper section here was replaced and repaired. Uh, we had a little bit of paint damage that had to be fixed. And uh, so this has now been fixed. It was done super quickly. Uh, we also had some problems, as you know, with the, the ABS system. Now, a couple of weeks ago when I was driving, it lit up like a Christmas tree inside here. All of the warning lights came on. And we had problems in so much as the bolts braking system didn't work. All of the lights came on, all of these warning lights here came on. And the car decided that it just wasn't going to work properly. It had issues with the brakes. And this is the day after that little small collision that we had in the car wash. Now, Chevrolet said at the time that it was because of some issues with the ABS system. There were two shorts on the ABS. So they replaced both of the front ABS sensors, which have now been replaced. And they were done in less than two days. So the car was set up um, for a repair on the Sunday. It was trailered because I didn't feel it was safe to drive. We trailered it to the local um, dealership. They looked at it on the Monday the parts arrived by Tuesday and the car was ready to be picked up Tuesday. But because of the accident damage, we ended up having the Chevrolet Bolt trailered or driven rather down to the body shop where they did the repair to the front. Now, as you can see, I think it's really cool today because uh, obviously the car's nice and clean because it's just been in the shop. Um, very little wear on this after about 34,000 miles we've now got on the clock for this car. It's two and a bit years into its lease, and we do intend to buy the car at the end of the lease. Right now, we've got, these are the original Energy Saver tires on them. They are starting to show a, a little bit of uh, tread wear. You can see there is the tread wear indicator. So we are getting closer to the end of the tire life for this car. But the thing we're gonna do today at some point is we're gonna head down to our local tire place and we are going to put our winter tires back on. So we've got these, which were winter tires from last year. These are Nokian Hakapalita R8s. They are not my favorite winter tire. The R8s are studded winter tires. They're not designed primarily for efficiency, but we put these on last winter because we had a tire puncture. We had an issue with one of our tires and we had to put some winter tires on and these were the only winter tires they had from the Nokian brand. And I wanted to stick with Nokian because I'm, I'm a fan of the Nokian tires. So this is a pair of R8s. Um, we've just ordered a brand new pair of Nokian Hakabalita R4s, which will be going on the car later today. So these tires will be coming off. We did have our first or second, 
second or third actually second or third frost of the winter so we've had those uh these are the summer tires they're going to come off they're all season but they're not snowflake symbol tires which are what the ones in the back of the car are and obviously we're very 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 uh important for us to have good traction in the winter and we do like going up to Mount Hood. So general overview of the car as it stands right now, it's in pretty good condition. Ignore the protein shake bottle there, that was my breakfast this morning. And the same in the back, it's it's pretty good condition. And we have a, a little doggy uh, hammock for our dogs um, and the car is really wearing up rather well despite being, you know, Two and a half years old now. A few scratches and, and whatnot on the interior, but nothing major. The car has been really reliable uh, up to this point. The underhood area is looking pretty spectacular and pristine. Some of you said there may have been a problem with this 12 volt battery, but it doesn't appear that that was the problem. Obviously, if it comes back, then the 12 volt battery is going to be my first suspect here. But the bolt's looking really clean and very wonderful after not a huge number of miles, uh, about 34, 35,000. And this is Pepper. Here's one of, our, one of our dogs. Pepper, you're on the internet, buddy. Yeah. So before I go back to uh, the desk and talk to you about some of the other things, let's give you a bit of a tour of the studio as it stands right now. This is a bit of a mess. I do apologize. This is our green screen setup at the moment. This is where... I'm standing where the camera is for 10, and obviously I stand there and do my thing. These are the lights we use. They are actually from Home Depot, believe it or not. And they are pretty strong, pretty powerful lights. Let me plug them in and I'll show you. So this is what we use for our green screen setup. And you can see, if we stand here, you see that we've got the lights and they operate and give us a pretty good lighting these lights are off right now but they're led lights they're pretty powerful must have not switched it on at the bottom oh it's that's why it's not working it's not plugged in anyway those are the lights we're also going to be putting these soundproofing tiles up on the wall we did try and put a couple up but we had some issues getting the 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 adhesive tape to stick to this stuff because of the paint so we're going to use like picture frame uh, picture hooks and things like that to put that up. This is where we're at now with all of the soundproofing and insulation that we need to put in here. And obviously we are limited by budget at the moment as to how quickly we can get everything up. So my camera equipment just back from the Chevrolet Bolt EV drive event we did yesterday. I can't talk about it. I'm on embargo, so I can't talk about it. Um, but there you are. We have a new server set up here with a new server. Uh, that we got earlier this year and then we've got a storage space so some of you have been expressing some interest in what we're going to be doing here we're going to be putting up a temporary wall to here and then across which will be our kitchen area this is going to become our green screen set area when we've finished dealing with all of the unpacking and, and everything like that I know it's an absolute mess but video production is more important for us and then here we're using these big blankets. Let me come up here and show you. So we're using these big soundproof blankets and we got this idea off Jay-Z Two Cent um, because it's a really easy way of blocking some of the higher frequency sound reverberations without damaging the sprinkler system. So there you are, there you have it. Let's see if I can come back down this ladder without making anybody feel sick or anything else. So I'll come back into the studio now. Uh, oh, when we're getting our charging station, it is on the way. The charging station is going to go there. So let's turn off the lights. We'll come back in here. One final thing is the Mesa thermostat that we have now installed in the studio as well. Some people were asking, are we being sponsored by Mesa to put these in? No, we're not. It's just a really good way of controlling the baseboard heater here. So you can actually turn the Mesa up and the baseboard heater will come on. Obviously, because this is the rented place, you don't want to make 
huge changes. Um, but it is a lot more energy saving for us to do that than it is, uh, for example, to do anything else. So we are back and I hope that I'm not echoing. Thank you everybody. I hope you enjoyed that a little bit. Tell me if that worked. Tell me if the little bolt trip and the studio trip worked because I'd be very interested to see if it did in fact work. So let's go back and we'll read some of the comments and we'll go from there. So uh, I love fast cars and racing. Uh, yes, <laughs> people do not behave harass. No, that's true. Um, uh, did they ever get down to the problem of why it moved, rolled into another car? Well, it could have been me. I'm going to be completely honest here and say, it could have been me, I could have caused the problem, but we don't know for sure. And I won't know unless there are any other issues that, that crop up. What I can say is that my, the analytics we got from the smartphone app, or from rather from, from OnStar, suggests that there were several issues going on, excuse me, and that that was partly to blame with this. You're meant to be getting lots of snow in the next few days. Really? Where are we supposed to be getting snow? Tell me about the snow. I would love to get some snow. It is very cold. It's, it's just above freezing outside right now, which is why we're putting the winter tires on. Hello, doggy. How much battery degradation do we have? I'm assuming you're talking about the Chevrolet Bolt. Now, the battery degradation in the Bolt is not particularly noticeable at this point. I'm still getting 180 to 190 miles of predicted range at 90% state of charge when it's fully charged at this time of year. Now bear in mind that in the winter the Chevrolet Bolt EV is not particularly energy efficient because it has a resistive heater and the resistive heater takes quite a lot of energy to keep the cabin warm. It's not got a heat pump like the Nissan Leaf or, or certain other cars and so it is a little less energy efficient in the winter. I haven't noticed any major degradation I, I mean, as you all know, I drove that car to Los Angeles and back less than a month and a half ago. That's crazy. In fact, this time last month, uh, I was just on my way back from LA and it was lovely and warm and it was 85 degrees Fahrenheit and now we're ba barely above freezing. So uh, not a huge amount of battery degradation noticed. I will be doing a trip up Mount Hood at some point in the not too distant future and we'll be able to kind of see how the car behaves in the snow, etc, etc. What was wrong with the Bolt? Well, there was an issue with the ABS sensor. We had two ABS sensors fail apparently at the same time, which may or may not have been a side effect of the minor accident we had the day before. It was replaced under warranty, no cost to us, and the accident repair was about $800. So again, I have a really good insurance policy. I have a, a $100 deductible. Um, if you're outside of the US, basically that's your your um, your excess as uh, $100. So I paid that and, and the rest of the stuff was taken care of by my insurance. But it's really good to be back behind the wheel of a Chevrolet Bolt EV. It's good to be back behind the wheel of an EV. I've been driving, uh, first drove a, Sil a Silverado for a couple of days and then we had a Subaru Outback for about a week. So uh, picked up my car yesterday, immediately after getting back off of the 2020 Chevrolet Bolt EV launch event. Uh, but I am not able to talk to you about that. So watch out, there will be a video coming on Monday. Um, I think it's okay for me to say that uh, the video is going to be quite a short video. It was a, a one take video that we did. It's not going to be like an extensive review, uh, but that's primarily because this is a car that everybody knows pretty well. So there's no point me doing another in-depth review of a car that everybody already knows. So it's kind of a more of an update than anything else. Um, I'm from the South and baseboard heaters are a novel thing, says Andrew. They are kind of a, a novel thing here. Oh. I've just been sent a $100 off a GoPro 8 by GoPro. We need to buy some new GoPros. We're going to the LA Auto Show, so we need to try and raise a bit of money for that. I've been looking at flights and hotels. Erin is not in the office today. She's not feeling very well, but I'm gonna give her the task. She's actually working from home, I think. 
Um, and she, she asked me earlier on if there's anything I, I can ask her to do from home. So I think looking at flights and, and trying to find somewhere for us to stay when we're in LA is gonna be one of the things. And we're gonna try and upgrade our cameras. And GoPro just sent me a $100 off the GoPro 8. So uh, we need to buy a couple of GoPro 8s. Um, so we can do live streaming. Uh, GoPro does have the live stream facility available there in it. All right, let's read through some of these questions because we haven't actually had a chance to go through them because when I was outside streaming with my phone, I wasn't able to answer any of your questions. All right, so, um, such a shame, says Simon, that the Ball TV never made it over the pond. That is, it's, it's it really is a shame that the Ball TV didn't make it to the UK. Um, you may not know this, but the original designer of the Bolt TV is actually a Brit who now lives in, in South Korea. And if you look at the design language of the Bolt TV, you'll notice there's very much a, very in, a lot of design influences from, from the Vauxhall and Opal brand of the 90s, which is where he was working previously. Um, and I think it, it, it would work really well in the UK, but obviously GM didn't want to make a right-hand drive version, didn't feel there was a market, um, which is all kind of uh, went a bit uh, Pete Tong, as we say in the UK. Um, all right, very, yes. What was wrong with the Volt? We already answered that. You should glue some hot glue if you need to take it off, heat gun, heat gl gun it away. Yeah, I, we might do that. Um, we may just use nails. And the re reason being is that that set um, is designed for, uh, for us to, to essentially figure out um, the set is designed so that we can take down the the tiles and we need to film in that space. The idea ultimately is that we're going to have a garage set so it looks like a regular garage in anybody's house and so we want to be able to remove those sand tiles when we're filming against that wall so that's one of the things that we're going to do. Um, all right, would you recommend putting aero wheels on the bolts? I've been looking at the EV01 wheels from Fast Wheels California. I haven't had a chance to play with them. Maybe I should get them to send me a set and we'll try it out. I would love to hear what your experiences are with those wheels. Aerodynamic wheels um, on something like the Bolt are not going to be a huge problem in unless you're going to be driving really hard and braking a lot. You know, we rarely use the friction brakes on our bolts. And so, yeah, it probably would make a little bit of a difference, but it's going to be in percents or tenths of a percent rather than anything larger, I think. Now, if you lowered your car and you installed aero wheels, then you may see a one or a two percent increase in range. And I'm just basing this off the top of my head. The bolt is pretty aerodynamic for its uh, form factor. Um, and by that, I mean that particular shape is not very aerodynamic per se, but GM has done everything it possibly can to make that shape as aerodynamic as possible. Obviously, cameras would work better than having mirrors and things like that, but eh. All right. Um, electric cars are horrible, Baker says baked. I'm really sorry that you think that way. I assume you've never ridden in one, so maybe you should find one to ride in. It might surprise you. acweather.com reporting it, but never read it on a map. It's more east of you. Yeah, eastern Oregon tends to get more, um, more snow than we do. If you're west of the Cascades, you tend not to get it. Um, but where we go, we'll see. No incentives in North Carolina, so only a Leaf Plus is readily available. We'll have to special order for test drive for Kona or Bolt. I think that the Bolt and the Kona are good choices. The challenge, of course, is to find a dealership that supports your car. And owning a car that is not supported by your dealership, even if it's in warranty, can be a bit of a challenge. So think really carefully about which model is going to have the best um, service capabilities for you there. We got the Ampera. Uh, says Simon. Yeah, I like the Ampera. I used to have an original Bolt as well. Sorry, an original Volt. Um, but there we go. 
Uh, have you heard anything new on the Bolt EUV? Okay, so I was at the event yesterday um, and the day before. There was some discussion about some of the differences that the new 2020 Bolt uh, has compared to previous model years. As I said, I can't talk about them. Um, there was no specific mention of the EUV, although General Motors was very keen to point out that this is not going to be the only electric car that we're going to see from the brand in the near future. So take from that what you will. Um, cost of manufacture of maintenance, sorry, cost of maintenance for Bolt tires and electric bill? It's a really good question. So uh, the Bolt comes, certainly if you're leasing, you get two free maintenance cycles. So I haven't had to pay anything yet for maintenance. I'm paying about $277 a month for my Bolt. Um, that was because I had a down payment on the car that was in the form of a trade-in. I also got a discount because my Bolt was actually involved in an accident before it was put on the road. Something happened at the dealership, someone ran it into a, dr into a drive pole, and so uh, they had to repair it and it was sitting in the lot. And when we came in and looked for a Bolt, they said, do you mind buying a car that has had some repair work done on it? And obviously it had a full warranty. It was like new in terms of the repair work. And so we bought it, we got a decent discount off that Bolt for that reason. So we're paying $277 a month for the, for the, for the lease. That's for 36 months. Um, and we are doing 15,000 miles a year now. So we're way over our mileage by this point. And I do intend to buy the Bolt at the end of the period because the Bolt is a car that's done really well for me. Um, I haven't noticed any major uh, degradation in range. I haven't noticed any major issues with the car. And I don't intend to, keep, to, to sell that car on. I don't feel the need to have a larger car. I don't feel the need to have a car with more range. I don't feel the need to have any extra bells and whistles. Uh, we are just about to put a tow hitch on it. So we have a tow hitch on the Bolt. The Bolt was, um, when we bought it, we asked the Chevrolet dealer to put a hitch on it. And they put a hitch on it that's designed for cycle carriers and load carrying car carriers, nothing for actually towing. And so it's that particular hitch is not designed to tow, but we went to Torklift Central. We paid full price, I should be really clear about this. We paid full price from Torklift Central for a hitch to go on the bolt and that hitch is uh, going to pull a small motorcycle trailer and when I say a small motorcycle trailer what I mean is a really aerodynamic low small motorcycle trailer that's designed to pull behind something like a Honda Goldwing and it's going to have some of our flight cases in it. Now the reason we're going to do that rather than a load carrier on the back of the hitch is because last year we did drive to CES, or earlier this year we drove to CES in our Bolt and we had a hitch plate on that, we had a hitch carrier on the back. And because the hitch on the Bolt is kind of low to the ground, we had some issues with it bottoming out, so we got some scraping damage on the actual carrier. And also it's, you know, it, it's not as uh, good in terms of um, handling you're weighing down the rear end of the car, whereas if you have a nice hitch and you have a properly balanced trailer, there shouldn't be a major difference to the way that the vehicle um, sits when it's driving. And we need to be able to get a team of four people in that car. So for CES this year, assuming we can raise the funds, we are going to take myself, Kate Walton Elliott, that's pure Kate, we're gonna take Aaron, of course, and we're gonna take Brandon one and hopefully Brandon two. So we'll have a team of two camera guys, We'll have Erin who will be doing uh, some stuff in front of a camera, but mainly um, she'll be our PA for that trip, our production assistant. And um, Kate and myself will be going in front of the camera and giving you some stuff. We're also gonna try and get a booth this year. And I want to know if you guys want us to do some live broadcasts from the event. And if you do, let us know in the comments below what you would like to see us do. So that little test I did earlier on with this camera, you know, when I was just testing out the camera and going around and seeing if we can uh, get things um, working. That was uh, me essentially testing to see if I can do, see if it still works. I was testing, testing to see, if, to see I if I can do stuff like this live with the camera. So this is a camera on my phone um, and we are just testing live. That's Aaron's desk right there. So, so we wanted to see if that was possible and it does appear that it is possible. So um, hopefully we can do that in um, 
at CES. So we're going to have more stuff in the car, which means uh, more people in the car, which means you can carry less stuff in the car. We don't want to put a roof rack on because that really does sap your range. So a small trailer on the back is probably our most sensible thing. Um, all right. So thank you, Dylan, for sending us some money. Um, we are EV shopping in the spring. Thank you. Dylan, I'd love to know what your experience, I see you denoted uh, some Canadian dollars there, so I'm assuming you're in Canada. So let's uh, let's see how you get on there in Canada. I'd be interested to see what choices are available for you. I know Canada is a massive country, so it's very varied based on where you live as to what you can and can't buy. I know, for example, that, that BC, British Columbia, um, pretty good for EVs. Um, Alberta, less so. Um, I know that uh, a, a French Canadian shopping for EVs is, is pretty good, but I know that some other provinces are not so good. So love to hear what your experiences are and also how you handle the winter as well. Um, all right, so let's go and answer some more of these questions. The other year you told us that, the, that in California, the old leaf um, can be bought for 10 grand from new before switch over to Mark II. How are Mark I Leaf resales holding up? Well, I was actually checking earlier on today. You can buy a Mark I Nissan Leaf for as little as 5,000 US dollars now. Um, and for that, you're not gonna get a great vehicle. But $5,000 would get you a commuter Leaf, and that's pretty impressive. So let's see what what, what the market holds up in the, in the coming uh, months. But it does seem to be that's a pretty good base price for a second gen uh, sorry for a first generation um, Nissan Leaf. Now you can buy a first generation Chevrolet Bolt for around the eight to ten thousand dollar mark. I know this excuse me because Erin and I have been looking at first generation bolts for her for a while and so you know that that is really a good way of um, of getting into the plug-in world and of course also the Fiat 500e very, very low cost secondhand car, as is the Spark EV, if you can get hold of one. Um, and also the Smart for Two. I've started to see Smart for Twos in that five to $6,000 golden price bracket. And it really does depend on whether you're looking for a car to go long distance, or whether you're looking for a commuter car. If you're looking for a commuter car, you really cannot go wrong with any of those vehicles. So, uh, so there we are. All right. You're gonna get a live wire or a zero. I really want a motorcycle, but unfortunately, uh, we're a bit strapped for cash at the moment. Uh, we don't make a huge amount of money on this channel, um, not when you've paid everybody else. And so um, eventually, maybe I will get one, but right now I can't afford one. And I think it's it's something that I think a lot of people see, you know, they see you on YouTube, they assume that you've got uh, shed loads of cash, and we don't have shed loads of cash. We, we decided to spend our money and invest our money on retirement and things like that. So yeah, it, it will come, I'm sure. But right now, no, no money. Um, the plans, immediate plans really for us, uh, for the house. So we can, we're gonna invest some money into our house. We just spent a significant amount of money on those baseboard, uh, the Mises that I, I talked about earlier on in the show. If you don't know what a Mises is, let me show you. Uh, we'll come over here. So the MISA, for those who don't know, are these little thermostats here. Um, this is a completely digital thing, so I can actually say, hey, Siri. I don't know if it's going to work because I'm streaming. Hey, Siri. Set Transport Evolved Office Thermostat. Set Transport Evolved Office Thermostat to 18 degrees Celsius. Let's see if it works. The studio is not responding. Oh. Make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi or have remote access set up in the high this, if this, is, if this would be the case, isn't it? It's not responding, but that is the Mesa. So we did spend a significant amount of money on, on upgrading, upgrading our Mesa, well, our thermostats to Mesas. Um, so, so there we are. Um, so we're, we're spending money on that. We're also spending money. We'll to get a chicken coop at some point for my birthday. I turn 40 next month. So I've said I wanted chickens for my birthday. We have a third of an acre. We are intending to grow our own food next year and I'd love to get some chickens to help improve the soil and just, you know, pets and, and have fresh eggs. Um, not intending to eat them, no interest in eating chickens, but would love to have them as pets. And we do live up in the country, which means that I know there's a risk of, you know, coyotes and wolves and foxes and other critters getting them. So we're gonna have to work on that, but there we go. Um, all right, so questions. Should I buy 
Uh, oh no, I'll go up a little bit more. Did the repair shop mention whether this is a bolt specific problem or just something that happens with ABS sensors in general? Sounds like it wasn't an EV specific issue. ABS sensors do go wrong from time to time. And I think that, that uh, you know, we can sometimes have these problems with ABS sensors. And you're right, it's not, it doesn't appear to be a specific issue with that car, um, but it caused a whole heap of issues. You know, it stopped driving properly. Um, it, it stopped doing other things. Um, hello, Erin. She's in the chat. She's being a moderator for me. Thank you, Erin. Uh, we, we are, um, we are expecting uh, no more problems with the car, but if we have any, obviously I'll let you know. It caused the steering, uh, the power steering to stop working. It caused problems with the brakes locking at the rear. I didn't have a speedometer. I actually asked a local sheriff to, to follow me back home because I pulled over when I first got the wind of the problem and I was on the phone to OnStar using the OnStar link in the car. And after I rebooted the car, it got worse. And so I, I went back to the sheriff and said, hey, would you, would you mind escorting me back home. Um, I was about four miles from home and I was just about to go up a windy country road. I said, I really don't want to break down at the side of the road and I don't think it's safe staying here. I'd rather have the car shipped from uh, my house than anything else. So there we go. That That's the way uh, we, we did it. And I don't know if there's going to be any other problems there, but there we go. Uh, do you have any video on Kia deliveries of the EVs in Europe uh, in 2020 because of new emissions rules? I don't. Uh, but that's a really good uh, topic there, Robert. We need to have a special email for people to send us email suggestions for videos. Maybe that's something Aaron and I can talk about next week. Aaron says, or Aaron, Aaron, should I buy a new bolt and sell it? Because in Massachusetts, I've seen new 19 bolts for $23,000. No, I think you should buy a bolt and drive it. It's a great car. Uh, the bolt, obviously, uh, uh, Massachusetts uh, is, um, is one of the clean air states, and I'm assuming that cars are in pretty good demand there. Uh, the 19s are going to be cheaper now because of the 20s coming out, so don't do anything there. Um, Thank you, Lars. You are going a good job, and it's you and Tesla Bjorn from Norway that I follow. You are so good at what you do. Thank you very much. I do love hearing people who enjoy the show. Paul says, my work bought a Bolt after always making fun of me with my Bolt SR. They are very impressed with it. Um, the Bolt is a great work vehicle. It's a great fleet vehicle. It's no nonsense, and you don't it's not a particularly nerdy car. It, it drives fairly normally. Uh, the, the displays are fairly normal. Yes, there's that big touchscreen display in the middle, but it is fairly generic in its experiences. All right. Amazing turnaround time. My personal experience with Tesla repairs has been quite different. Hopefully it gets better over time. Yeah, and one of the reasons why we ended up, you know, we didn't go with the Tesla is because we do have to drive a lot based on where we live and based on our requirements, work and things like that. And we didn't want to constantly swap vehicles. And my wife, um, Kate, um, that's a Mary Kate, not pure Kate. They are two different Kates. So the Kate that you don't see on camera is my wife. And um, she likes having her own car. She doesn't like the whole sharing car thing with me um, because I move the seat or whatever. She likes the car just so. She likes to not have to deal with the hassle of changing things over every day. And so... Um, for us to share a car, um, we've done it in the past, but it's not particularly good for, for either of us. You have to check to make sure that the other person doesn't need the car. And so now we live in the country, we definitely need two cars. And so we wanted, when we got the Bolt, we wanted a car that was going to be pretty reliable in that regard. So yeah, that was one of the things. We are potentially looking at a third car at the moment, um, a project vehicle, but it depends on Transport Evolved. It would be a Transport Evolved project car. And I want you guys to tell me, would you want us to have a workshop here and do a project car? Would you want us to do that? Or do you think our bailiwick should always be new cars and used cars rather than actually working on cars? Let me know in the comments below because we've got the potential here from another YouTuber actually to buy a car that another YouTuber a friend of mine is selling and maybe converting that. So um, it's already electric, but maybe doing some upgrades. So let me know if you're interested, if you think we should do that. And then we have to try and figure out how we can fund it and afford it. Um, all right. Live stream would be good. I'm assuming that was for the L LA Auto Show and also for CES. Now we know that this works. Maybe we'll be able to use this a little bit more. This is Donald Trump. Go oil electric vehicles is going down. 
Uh, well, I uh, didn't think it was Donald until you used is instead of are, so maybe, hello Donald, get out the White House. Uh, that was a joke, by the way. Rivian will be on public display near the normal part this weekend. Finally able to show my friends what it looks like in person, says John Squire. I would love to go and tour that facility. It would be very cool. Anthony says, uh, I don't understand why you can't talk about the new bolt. You are promoting their product. Obviously, to me, it's like GM doesn't want to sell them. Now, Anthony, I understand why you would say that, and I totally understand that. But the reality is this. So how automotive press launches work is a small number of journalists are invited to an event. Generally, it's less than 20. They will have 10 cars, maybe. Sometimes they'll have a little, a little larger fleet. And automotive journalists will pair up. So you'll have two journalists in a car. So I, um, uh, who was I with yesterday? I was with um, Bob from uh, from Wards, I believe, yesterday. So we get paired up, okay? We drive the cars. You can film if you want to. I, I did a film yesterday. But then the next day, another stream of journalists fly in and they drive the car. And then maybe the next day, another stream of journalists fly in and drive the car. Now, if the car company said, okay, you can just do everything the first day, it would be unfair for those who were in the first, in the last wave compared to those in the first wave. So the reason they do this is because on Monday next week, they'll make a press release talking about all of the new features of the 2020 Bolt EV, most of which you probably heard of. I'm not gonna say there's a huge amount of hidden information because there isn't, but there will be a video from me, hopefully on Monday, if I can get it uh, set out in time and everybody else who was on that press event whether they went on the Monday the Tuesday the Wednesday the Thursday or the Friday and sometimes these events can last all week everybody gets the same chance to publish their reviews at the same time and that's got two bonuses so first of all it means it doesn't matter what wave you're on you still get a fair crack at the whip but second it also means that GM or the car company in question gets all of the press going live at the same time which is actually a beneficial thing for them as a brand so that's why they do it it's not about GM trying not to talk about it um, but we are not allowed to talk about it we are on embargo and it's more than my job's worth to talk about something that's on embargo because then I don't get invited to another event all right Hey boss, sorry for being late. It's okay, Erin, that, there you go. Um, Charles Ray, thank you very much for your donation. You are a gent, thank you very much. Um, all right. Do you, did you say your wife would kill you if you got another motorbike? Uh, yes, we'll see if that actually happens or not. Um, Simon, I'd love Mrs. GB to answer now, lol. Well, I mean, maybe uh, my wife has been on the camera before, so I'm assuming that's who you mean. I mean, we're both Mrs. GB, so it, it's kind of confusing. Um, Paul, uh, Pedro says, can a Tesla bought in the US run in Europe? What are the constraints? Okay, so each car company is going to have different regulations. Uh, sorry, each country has different regulations about what the cars need to have. It's far easier for a, a, a US car to be imported to Europe than it is for a European car to be imported to the United States. I know this because we wanted to bring our original Nissan Leaf to the United States and we couldn't. It was just going to be too complicated and too costly. Despite the them being made on the same production line as the uh, European, as, as the US spec cars, my Japanese built Nissan Leaf would not meet the same, it didn't have the same certification as the American version. There are subtle differences between each market. Now in the case of the Tesla, you are quite lucky there. You may have to have some headlight changes. Um, I would assume that you'd need to have some homologation of the headlights. Cool thing, or not cool thing, American lights very often on cars are not patterned. They don't have that little divot that you have in Europe to stop you from dazzling people coming the other way. So if you're watching this in America and going, what's she talking about? Um, in Europe, headlights have to have a special pattern, the reflectors have to have a special pattern that makes it really difficult for your headlights to dazzle oncoming traffic. So the, the beams are effectively focused in a different direction. In the US, that's not the case, so you can actually dazzle people coming from the other direction. And it's a constant problem where I live because there's lots of pickups and SUVs up in the country and we're constantly being dazzled driving home. So you would probably need to have some light modifications done. But my reaction would be, uh, my initial gut reaction would be to talk to Tesla and say, hey, we want to take this car abroad. How about it? 
I know it's happened before. I know of other cars from American companies that have, or American market cars that have been taken to Europe. It's generally a lot easier than the other way around. Um, unrelated, but I found out there's a Japanese Prius Prime with an Evangelion Unit 1 wrap. That is sick. Also, uh, Aaron and I both watch anime, so um, I didn't realize that you liked Evangelion. I like my mechs. I like mech anime. Uh, totally understand the chickens rock. Uh, an old A-frame children swing, remove swings, bend tie o bend tin over the roof for top chicken wire for rest. It's light and two people can lift and moving, so always fresh grass. Yeah, that's a good idea. Views on the Model Y. I plan to trade in my Model 3. I, look, we don't know what the Model Y is going to be like yet. I think it's going to be a pretty good car. It's going to be based on the Model 3. So, you know, so far so good, right? You know, that, that would be awesome. Um, is Rich Rebuilds or something... Is it like Rich Rebuilds or something different as a project? It would be a car that's it's not owned by Rich. It's owned by another YouTuber in the sector. Um, I am considering buying it, but it's uh, it's money that I needed to build. What about a miner? I'm, I'm assuming you mean Morris Miner. We are trying to get Kate Walton Elliott's Pure Kate's Morris Miner converted, and I would love to convert the Morris Miner too. So maybe, maybe a mix of new used project cars would be great. Let's let's try and do that. Um, we have to build all of this. Should we do a truck? Erin? Uh, um, we need to talk in the chat uh, off, offline. Yeah, it's a truck. We'll leave it at that. Uh, we have a potential for a truck, um, for a project truck, but it would cost several thousand and we don't have the money for it right now. So we need to decide what we're going to do um, and whether we're going to do that. All right. All I have been seeing at Milford Proving Ground are vaults. Are we talking about Milford Proving Ground in the United States or are we talking about the one in the UK? Because there's one in each country as far as I'm aware. Uh, all right, maybe work on a mini for a series for take two. I'd love to do some more stuff on take two. Did you see or hear the report about the three thirty-three thousand dollar bill for a Nissan Leaf replacement? Was not a mistake. Nissan is liable under Australian law to replace it. We did a video on it. Go check it out on the channel. Um, all right, I managed to get coffee on my on my uh, trousers. That's not good. Same as with our um, IMEA for importing, says Kate Walton Elliott. Pure Kate is in the chat saying, hey, every, hey everybody. Uh, we've got the whole team here, apart from the camera guys. Uh, and my wife, uh, uh, Mary Kate, who is at work doing other stuff right now. She was in the last live chat, so there we go. Uh, more questions. A project car would be a great idea. You already know Yahoo and Rich Rebuilds may also help. Yeah, we're on the wrong side of the country for, for Rich, um, but Yahoo is just down the road. Well, just down the road. It's about a thousand miles away, which in America is not far, right? It really is not far. Uh, hey, folks, I'm just lurking as in plumbing, but paused for a sip of tea. Hello, Kate. She's 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 doing great work with her house. She's being really eco-friendly. She's done some great things. And uh, talking about houses, I was really pleased this morning when I left my house because uh, this is the the first hard frost, it's the, like the third or fourth frost we've had, but the first hard frost we've had. And I looked up at my roof when I walked the dogs this morning and it was still super, super solid um, frost. Our neighbor's roof didn't have any frost on it at all. And of course that means that our house is really well insulated. So I'm happy with that. Every US truck ruins your eyes and especially with the HID headlights. It is true, it is true, it is true. And Erin says she loves Evangelion, so we, we need to watch Evangelion at some point. Maybe this should be a transport evolved staff party, Erin, to watch Evangelion. I looked over at your desk when I said that. I don't know why. Um, so, Truckler. Hey, we just confirmed Jack Rickard will be f fully charged. Live 2020, the godfather of EVs. Lovely. <clears throat> Jack and I don't see eye to eye because Jack has been really rude and sexist to me in the past. Um, let's just leave it at that. I'm willing to make bygones be bygones. So there we we'll go. But that's where we're at right now. That's what happened with the bolt. That's what uh, that was, that's what happened with the bolt. Um, have a great day. Yeah, have a great day. Be lovely to see everybody. Um, we have um, some changes coming up to the channel this week that I just want to make you all aware of. I have to go into hospital tomorrow for some minor, minor surgery. And while it is a day surgery and we are 
anticipating it to go really easily and really well. And, you know, all of the guidance from the doctors is that you should be good to return to work the next day. If it's anything like the last surgery I had on this topic, it's kind of topical surgery. I've had some, basically I'm having some surgery done tomorrow that's, that's, that's similar to surgery I've recently had done. And um, if it's like the previous surgery I had, I just felt sore the second day. And it wasn't like I wasn't able to do stuff, but I just felt sore and cranky and I didn't really want to drive or anything like that. So I'm going to take Friday off because the surgery is tomorrow. I am going to take Friday off. And for those who don't know, Friday is the day that we prepare the TEN News Roundup Show, the Transport Evolved News Roundup Show. So that is the reason why this Saturday's 10 is not going to happen. We do have a replacement, I think. Um, I do have a replacement idea for a show, so hopefully we can make that happen and I will film that instead. So, it's nothing big. I'm going to become a... I can actually show you, actually. It depends. Are you squeamish? Uh, I am going to have another one of these put in. Uh. I'm going to have another one of these put in me. Uh, for those who don't know, this is a um, a heart monitor. It's a it's a heart monitor. Um, this is uh, the older model. Okay, this is the older model, and I'm going to have a new one put in, which is kind of the same the same length as that but about the thickness of this pen, or even maybe smaller. Um, so this used to live in there like that, underneath my skin, and they're gonna put a smaller one of these in me in um, tomorrow, which I am not looking forward to because I don't like having surgery, I don't think anybody does. Um, and it's, it's done under local anesthetic, so you are awake when they put it in and uh, hopefully then after two or three years they will be able to tell me if I can have it taken out and if I can come off the medication that I'm on. Um, the medication that I'm on controls the heart rate of my heart and at the moment my heart has a tendency to beat too quickly which can cause arrhythmias, which can cause bad things. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was working out and my heart rate went up to 210 beats per minute, which is about 130% of what it should be. Um, like the maximum heart rate for someone my age is about 180, 190. So it was well above what was safe for my heart. And then the next day I was working out and I did actually pass out. So that's why they're putting that in. They want to make sure that I don't have the same hereditary heart condition as the rest of my family does. Um, and it's kind of ironic because I cover electric vehicles and it is an electrical problem. It's not a plumbing problem. It's an electrical problem with your heart. Your, one, of your, uh, one of the chambers doesn't uh, respond to electrical impulses properly. So TMI, but that is what I'm having and we go from there. And I love the fact that I can wander around and go, this A, this used to live inside of me, which I think is crazy. But B, this is what they told me was injectable, which I suppose several years ago was injectable. Made by a company out in Minnesota, right, apparently. So uh, there you go. There you are. So that is it. You've seen and heard what's going on with the Bolt VV. You've had a little t uh, tour around the studio. Just me in today. Erin's not feeling too well, so get better soon. And we'll hopefully be back with some more content later in the week. So don't stress if 10 doesn't happen on Saturday. We'll try and do something else instead. I should be back as normal on Monday. We'll get the Bolt review up on Monday for you all, the 2020 Bolt EV review. And then uh, we'll start planning for the LA Auto Show, hopefully. So if you want to help us with the LA Auto Show, it costs on average between two and $4,000 for us to get to a show um, in terms of paying people's salary, paying for transport, uh, paying for accommodation. That's generally the most expensive part. So if you want to help us get to more auto shows, make a donation using the links um, that we normally put in our videos and I'll put in this video once this video is up. I go to patreon.com forward slash transport evolved, take out a monthly donation there that would really help us. You can buy some swag from our swag store. We've got some nice new t-shirts for Halloween. Um, all 
all uh, no tricks, all treat is the the t-shirt we've got this year from Erin, which is fantastic. And it's in the store now, so go buy it for Halloween. Um, and also you can send us a coffee through a coffee through coffee. So that is pretty much it for this live stream. I think we are now gonna try and do live streams on Wednesdays from now on. I think you will like them. Eventually I'd like to do a live stream separately on the second channel and maybe we can do a regular video on the main channel. But we don't have enough people subscribed to the second channel yet to make it work. So there we go, we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching. Keep evolving.